Hi, I'm Pastor Steve Green, and with me is my wife, Dee. As we continue to work our way back, we believe the first thing to get back to is prayer. After 40 years of ministry, we know that prayer changes things. You're not alone. If you need prayer, call the MTC Christ is Center prayer line. Or submit your prayer request online, mtcfc.org. Remember, Remember, we're we're here here for for you, and and we've got your back. that up the message of the quintessential warrior the quintessential warrior because we know that as a leader we've had all kind of leaders down through history and especially this year political leaders financial leaders ed- educational leaders and they're the, they're the cream of the crop they're the top of their class and we've heard their words but according to Luke chapter 10 38 through 42 Martha a Mary sat down and heard his words a lot of people got to say a lot, a lot of things to say about a lot of things. But my part as a preacher is to make sure you hear his words that you hear in addition to theirs. We're not knocking their words. They got some good things to say. But Romans 10 says, how can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach it except he be sent? And if he's sent, I hope he's not just sent. I hope he's like his leader, Jesus. He's a quinty sent your leader amen for God so loved the word that God gave or he sent Jesus amen so Jesus is the quintessential leader on the screen you see what we're talking about tonight uh the quintessential you'll see q-u-i-n you know that means five or you know uh, as in quintuplets that kind of stuff uh, five babies quintessential quint on the screen last root word essential essential what is essential, as Rochelle Wallace says, what is absolutely necessary? What is, what is it that we just cannot leave without essential? Well, what we can't leave, leave without right now, we got a lot of good experts, a lot of good people with wisdom. We need the quintessential leader, uh, Jesus Christ. Now, during this Christmas season, we could talk about Mary, did you know? We could talk about Mary's bear, baby, and uh, we could talk about behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, the wonderful counselor, the uh, uh, mighty God. And we will get into that everlasting Father, uh, you know, Lily of the Valley, they call him Rose of Sharon, uh, all of those names but all of those add up to his name Jesus or it makes out what I call the leader of all leaders and down through the successive ages faith says in Hebrews 11 through faith we understand that the worlds were framed Hebrews 11 3 through faith we understand and the message Bible said if we could just get a handle on this faith thing like our ancestors did right Hebrews 11 2 by faith the elders the word elders in Hebrews 11 2 is by faith our ancestors Abraham Isaac and Jacob they learned how to get a handle on faith a lot of us trying to get a handle on living trying to get a handle on our jobs a handle on our new assignment but if you can just get a handle on uh, faith it'll be just like when we were riding bicycles in Pratt City like I'm sure many children would get Uh, if you got the handle bars right it steered where you were getting ready to go didn't matter about the brakes you got to first of all get the handles right so we can get a handle on faith we can make some things happen so that's what we're here to talk about Jesus is our quintessential uh, he's absolutely vital he's necessary amen Psalm 27 says but we want to take it a little bit further we want to talk about choosing to be blessed Choosing to be blessed because during this time of year as we exit out of 2020 and go into 2021 when you look at the year as we've had it one of the most catastrophic devastating I will define devastating on Sunday as being devastating devastating D-E-V-A-S-T vast vast means enormous huge well, to devast or devastating, same word, it means when the devil tears up your world. So we've had a very perilous uh, 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 kind of uh, a year, and, and uh, we uh, had a very catastrophic, the stars were not lining up. 
Amen. But when you fight from the heavens like Deborah did in, in chapter 5 of Judges 20, it says the stars were in their courses. They line up. All of the tea limes, uh, leaves line up right. And that's no witchcraft message at all there. Amen. So we want to make sure that we certainly understand all there is to know about Jesus Christ and all that he brings to the table. We want to choose to be blessed. Choosing to be blessed. Because the question that I've been asked the most and uh, we know it's the 23rd. Next Monday will be December the 28th. I won't forget it because I'm grateful. I'm not boasting. For, uh, on um, December the 28th, uh, back in 1980, 80, I answered the call to preach. So that would make that 40 years. I got a 40-year anniversary coming. What I'm saying, I don't count myself to apprehend it, but I could... To tell you a thing or two because I've seen a thing or two. I'm not as young as I used to be, not as old as I'm going to be, but I'm going to let these rivers begin to flow. But one of the questions, what I'm about to say, uh, during what I was just ministering, preaching at other churches, street ministry, radio ministry, television ministry, wherever I was, the most asked question in my years have been when people are going through catastrophic situations and traumatic situations, devastating, the first thing they want to know is, am I cursed? Is America cursed? Has this been a curse year? Well, we'll get biblically, theologically, doctrinally, Christologically, and redemptively correct to let the Bible answer the question. Uh, it could be. I know preachers don't like they ever uh, call nobody curse. And if you tell people that they're doing certain actions that will bring on a curse, then they'll start complaining. Oh, they're just trying to curse me. And all, no, no, no. There is a place where you could be. Well, we, what we want to do is end the season of the curse. Amen. And, but we do that by Christ's birth, right? Getting ahead of myself. Galatians 3.13. I'm asking questions before I can get in it. If we go there, it says Christ. Christ, not Jesus. Christ. Because if we get Jesus, a lot of people name Jesus. But if you don't have the Christos, which means the anointing, then you will forever be cursed. Christ hath redeemed us. Galatians 3.13 is going to tell us. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse. If we could pull that up. Galatians 3.13. Christ. This season of celebrating Jesus Christ's birth is for something. It's for breaking the curse. It says Christ on the screen hath redeemed. Bought us out from the curse. From the curse. From the curse of the law. Curse was threefold. Sickness, poverty, death. Sickness, poverty, death. Sickness, poverty, death. Doing Christmas. I don't know what you wish and what the elves going to bring you and Santa Claus and all that. But I know 3 John 2 says God still has a wish for you and it's under the tree that he wishes above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Well, watch this. Excuse me. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made, he was made the curse for us. He became the curse. Why? For it is written, curse on the screen is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Now, if you saw our, our Christmas special uh, this past Friday, you know that we talked about how the Grinch, G R I N C H, tried to steal Christmas, uh, but God sent a wrench, the carpenter. Every carpenter got to have a wrench, and he fixed Christmas. And we talked about the wrench and the bench and one inch at a time and, uh, and all that good stuff. Amen. So we, we understand that he was lynched, he was hung. He was hung on, on Calvary so that he could repair the breach of our society amen cursed is everyone that hangeth lynched on a tree why was he hung why was he lynched next verse there's a colon why that the blessing that the blessing on the screen that the blessing that the blessing that the blessing that the blessing how do i act Activate the blessing. That's why people will be coming by getting oil and uh, anointed oil. And as you're going to hear on Sunday, what all it does, because they want to be blessed. There are many ways to get blessed. Blessings of obedience. Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 through 14. It shall come to pass that if you hearken diligently and obey all these blessings. That was a conditional covenant. If you didn't obey, you didn't get blessed. And then verses 15 through 63 in Deuteronomy 28 lists as, um, uh, three times as many curses as it lists blessing. But we want to focus in on the blessed. But people want to know, 
uh, uh, if I'm cursed, how do I get it out? How do I know if I'm cursed? So I want to end this year by uh, breaking uh, the curse or reminding you that the curse has already been broken. You just need to start doing what you need to do to see it flowing for. My Bible tells me as we bring it up in Proverbs 10, uh, chapter uh, 10, verse 22. It is the blessing, Proverbs 10, 22. It's the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich. And he adds no sorrow with it there. The blessing, you see it, the blessing of the Lord. Not the blessings in this one blessing. When a man bless you, that's why uh, we have such wrestling with Esau and with Jacob. Uh, they wanted the father's blessing, both the paternal father and the heavenly father. When you got the blessing of the father, I uh, watch so many people try to go on with bastardized ministries and things like that. And, and sometimes uh, even in the uh, nuclear family, they try to get married without the blessings of their father being honored. And it can only go bad at the end because according uh, to Exodus 20 and uh, we see there uh, according to Ephesians 6 uh, if you honor your mother and your father it shall go well with you and it shall live long so it's not how fast you come out of the gate oh man I did it I mean my ministry is just killing it I tell you what if the father don't come down and affirm it like Matthew 3 that says when Jesus who had the pedigree oh he had he was in the right family according to Matthew's gospel chapter 1 but when he got baptized of John in the George River, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost came down, said, this is my Son. So if your Father, Heavenly, and Spiritual Father is not around at the most important function, uh, something might be wrong. So you might want to kind of get that straight. Amen. So it's the blessing that maketh rich that adds no sorrow because you can get blessed but later on up the road you're sorry that you ever did that all kind of stuff start coming out of the woods amen so the blessing of the lord it maketh rich on this great it make it that blessing maketh rich that blessing comes along when you you can come right on this kind of meeting here i i see i'm getting a little help here i'm sweating and why don't you come on make one of those cameo appearances get a, the preacher a little water here i want to make sure i grab that just in case i start sweating you're so kind there uh may the lord bless you who so hey you ready for a blessing since you gave me that uh matthew 10 42 so whoever give a cup of water in the name of a prophet just see what okay yeah yeah there you go hands all raised and stuff that's what we talking about uh, uh just by giving a cup of water uh to the name of a prophet man he shall receive a prophet's reward amen so it is the blessing of the lord that that maketh rich uh, and he adds no sorrow with it. The worst thing you can do is get a blessing on one hand, then come back and get sorrow or be sorry that you did it because you didn't have the Father's blessing. So uh, people are asking, uh, how do I be blessed? Well, you got to make a choice to be blessed. Amen? And then last but not least on that screen, the last topic, not only on the quintessential warrior that what Jesus is uh, and choosing to be blessed, the question is, well then whose curse? Who, who is cursed? Amen. So let's jump into it. We've already spent a little time on that. So let's uh, at least define real quickly again what we mean about quintessential. Again, the word in our spirit from prayer conference, Sister Rochelle, she said, man, we heard that word so much during the COVID-19 and who are the essential workers and who are the necessary, the doctors, the lawyers, and who are the first ones to, to get the vaccine? What's essential? Uh, it took my while for them to put the church world in there, but I want to tell you, uh, Jesus Christ is the leader of le uh, leaders, and it's kind of like they used to say with E.F. Hutton talks. Everybody, listen, man. When Jesus speaks, you better ask Mary. <laughs> uh, when they ran out of wine, when you start running out of stuff, Mary say, "Whatever he say, do. Whatever he say, do. You better be doing that." Amen. Whatever he said in John chapter two, when he had run out of wine there. So we're talking here about what do you mean by a quintessential leader? Defining quintessential, it sounds like a big word, but it has to do with five because I think there are five dimensions of him. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. After he became quintessential, here's what I'm trying to say to you. Not only is he at the top of his class, but if you listen to him, whatever field you're in, you will go straight to the top. Right straight. I said straight to the top. They used to say straight, straight, straight way. Amen. It says uh, quintessential, the meaning. There you see it. It is um, uh, an example. It is representing the most perfect or typical example of a quality or class. 
That's quintessential. Uh, they're all kind of leaders. They're all kind of warriors. They're all kind of generals. There have been all kind of doctors. There have been all kind of uh, bankers and financiers. Uh, you name it. But Jesus is the quintessential or he is the most perfect, just as we see on the screen. He is the most perfect or typical. He is a type of what a leader can be. He's an example of a quality of, uh, or class. Amen. He's in a class all by himself. And one of the things that you'll see going on with him is he's, uh, he's, 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 uh, he's lowly, he's in a manger, but yet he's a king. Amen. He's highly exalted, but he know how to humble himself. He don't, you know, just walk around with all haughty spirit like he's all that and everybody else are peasants. No, that's the leader. A leader that can walk with the common man or feel the common man's touch, but you got all the power. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, that's what we're talking about. A quintessential leader here. Uh, it, the, uh, it represents the most perfect or typical example of a quality or class. Now, where we're going to go into some of this um, as we look at some key scriptures and um, is um, let's look at what I call the sons of all. If you're going to be what he is and you're going to make it and finish, you're going to have to be connected to the candlestick over in Zechariah chapter four. I call them on the screen sons of oil. That's why on next Friday, you know, Sunday's coming up. There's a message that's going to give you a complete thesis almost on what oil does. But there are some of us are sons of oil. Did somebody anoint your head with oil? And sometimes you can have oil, even a prophet puts it on you like he did with Saul, took the vials of oil, and Saul still ended up getting rejected in a David coming before you. He took the horn of oil and he poured it on him, 1 Samuel 10. But there are those that are really sons of oil. We'll see there on the screen out of Zechariah chapter 4. And they'll end up, let's look at verse 12 first. They, uh, they call them the witnesses. So, uh, let's go there in Zechariah chapter uh, 4, verse number 12. They're the two witnesses that have, after the, uh, the uh, temple, the foundation has been laid, but they hadn't finished. Like many of you started some projects last year, but you did not finish them. So uh, he says, and I answered again, and he said unto me, what can these two be their witnesses? Uh, uh, these two olive branches, which through the two golden pipes, empty, watch this, golden oil out of themselves. Oh, man, that's a, that's a, a oil well. Golden oil. You mean all? Now, I know this looks like it's, it's gold here, but this is what I call, when this oil get on, you just struck gold, man. Uh, hell, the hell, I'm about like hellbillies. I guess I got a pass green one. Hellbillies. <laughs> You know, Billy's, you know, Ellie May and Jethro and all them, they, and Miss Drysdale and all that. Uh, yeah, yeah. But watch this out of the Amplified Bible. Sons of all, uh, because they were connected to a candlestick that had seven branches. It had just described us in the aforementioned verses. Uh, and through that candlestick, through the seven uh, branches there, the oil is being piped through it. God, which is the word of the Lord that's saying, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. We'll back that up in a moment. But it says, uh, uh, the second time uh, on the screen, I said, said to him, what are these two olive branches? Olive branches which produces olive oil. Olive oil. What are these two olive branches? And as close as we can get in on that oil, these olive branches, if we can come any closer. What are these two olive branches that produces the olive oil? What are they? Because uh, we got the oil here and got several vials of it. What are these that produce it? And he goes on to say, uh, what are these two uh, olive uh, branches which uh, uh, which uh, branches which are beside the two golden tubes or spouts by which the, uh, the golden oil is uh, emptied out, to empty out. Watch what it goes on to say. And he answered me, do you not know what these are? And I said, no, my Lord. All right. Did we miss that about the uh, sons of oil there? Yes, I want to make, yeah, th yeah, there it is. Uh, it says in verse 10, then said, these are the two sons of oil. So all my sons and daughters, they are called SOOs. <laughs> I know it may be called you some other thing. Let the redeemer of the Lord say, so, so, SOOs, sons of oil, sons of oil, son, S, of O, oil, O, sons of oil, who are Joshua, the high priest, and Zerubbabel. The prince of Judah. So uh, you got both the church, the high priest, and the government. 
sons of all, right? The two anointed uh, who stand before the Lord uh, 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 in the, uh, uh, throughout the whole earth. So that's what this all is. They are sons of all because if you're going to be a quintessential leader, you've got to complete it. Now, I didn't want to spend as much time there, but I'll go there anyway. We'll back up in King James if we can. I know I got you, Cheryl, all over the place. But if we could go up to around verse 4. And we'll pick it up there where we've been hearing uh, it will lead to that says not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. If we're going to be a quintessential leader like Jesus at the top of our class, we're going to thank God that he was born Christmas just not for us to just sing religious, the same old songs. And we should sing them. Hark the herald angels sing it. Silent night in old little town of Bethlehem. But I want to take it there. I mean, Paul says over in Hebrews 6, Therefore, leaving the elementary principles, let us go on to perfection, not laying again repentance from dead works and faith and, 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 and all that kind of stuff. And eternal judgment, let us go on so that we can taste of the power of the worlds to come. That's what it goes on to say there. But uh, so, uh, and, uh, uh, so I answered and spoke to the angel that talked with me saying, what are these, my Lord? He's seen the uh, golden candlestick and the angels that talked with, uh, with him, with them, uh, began answering and said to them, you don't know what these things be? He said, no, my Lord, I'm sorry I've been in church and been studying the tabernacle and understanding the outer court, the brazen altar. I've been understanding the labor and, uh, you know, then going to the holy place, the table of showbread and, and uh, you know, the uh, altar of incense that should be giving a sweet smelling perfume altar prayer incense. We just did a prayer conference. I'm sorry that I don't understand that incense is the it reverses the embalming. Right? Balm, B-A-L-M, is there no balm in Gilead, healing. When there is no healing, balm, then they have to uh, create a profession called the embalming, where they, when they embalm you, they take the blood out of you. That means you really did. But when there is a balm in Gilead, B-A-L-M, they put the blood of Jesus. I balm you in the name of Jesus when you enjoy the presence of the great physician. Amen. So we should understand the, uh, the altar of incense or the art of the apothecary, which made uh, fragrances or it called the art of the perfumer. That's what the balm is. You know, death has a stench. It has an odor. But the anointed has a fragrance. It's called the incense of God, we should understand that the altar of incense, which is prayers rising, praises rising to God. He inhabits those, uh, the table of showbread, uh, it, each family and each tribe represented. Uh, you know the story. But then there's that candlestick. And he said, you're looking at this candlestick and you don't know what this is? He says, yes. Uh, then he answered and said uh, uh, to him, uh, this is the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord saying, Zerubbabel saying, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. That's what that candlestick that, that uh, was uh, uh, yielding all of the oil there. Now, let's go on to verse number seven. Uh, if you didn't understand, if we missed that, we may go back for you can certainly understand how to become. He says, well, who art thou, O great mountain? Uh, uh, so uh, uh, this when, he, when you got the oil on you and you understand the candlestick, you start speaking to mountains. Uh, great opposition. Shall I go back to around verse two? It talks about the candlestick a little bit more before I shout grace. And, uh, grace. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we can stay there. We can stay there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, he said to me, What seest thou? In verse 2. And he said, uh, I have looked and behold a candlestick, uh, uh, all of gold. So we saw golden, all golden candlestick. And the seven lamps, which represent the seven spirits of God. So when we say not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, we're talking about the seven dimensions of the spirit of God. The spirit of God is not schizophrenic. He just got seven dimensions. I mean, I'm Pastor Green, but I'm a man. I'm a husband. I'm a father. I'm a pastor. I'm a believer. I'm an elder. I'm a deacon. I'm a, come on, I'm a teacher. Come on, I'm a businessman. I'm a CEO. But all this is called Steve Green. Well, the candlestick, the word of God, the Holy Spirit, it says, I, I, I have looked and Behold, a candlestick, all of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it, and seven lamps thereof. 
There's a bowl and seven lamps uh, and seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the top. So the number seven, if you were going to play lot or something, I would say, don't do it, but I would certainly uh, do seven or get an offering in my hand and they were seven, seven of some kind. Seven, seven, they perfect. And, 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 and the two olive trees by it and one upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left side thereof. What is all that language about? And, and so I answered and spake to the angel and talked with, talk with me saying, what of this? What's all this candlestick stuff here? Is it just when people get married and they light, you know, the, the wedding and the two go and light that final candle? Represent one from one family and one from another and the two becoming one? That's what's going to happen when you allow the oil of God to pump through your vessel uh, pipe through your vessel. You and the Lord is going to become one and it's no longer going to be by your might nor by your power but you're going to be tied into the quintessential leader and you will have access to all of his power. And he said there uh, he talked with me and I said uh, you don't know what these are? He said no my Lord. One of God's the obvious. Then he answered and spake unto me this is the word of the Lord. That's the prophetic. This is the word of the Lord uh, saying, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. Some leaders that, that are, you know, uh, power hungry, they're infatuated with power. They're infatuated with might and numbers. And, but the prophet tells us in Jeremiah, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might or the physicality of his army. Uh, uh, come on, let not the rich man glory in his riches. What are you going to glory in? The fact that God is pumping through the candlestick, through the word of God, the sevenfold spirit of God that will give you the might to do what you could not do in your own strength and make you the same kind of conqueror and leader that Jesus was as a matter of fact not just the same but makes you more than a conqueror that calls you to say greater works than these shall you do somebody ought to be shouting right now said these are, uh, are the uh, power of God that say not by might not by power but by my spirit said the Lord of hosts now let's keep on going here says who art thou O great mountain now metaphorically uh, uh, if you were to look over in the uh, if we will in the Amplified it calls a great mountain human obstacles. The oil helps you to overcome human obstacles. Sickness in your body, uh, a lack in your pocket, rebellion in your house, unemployed, human obstacle, bosses that don't like you, judges that, that misjudge you. Come on, somebody. Human obstacle. Neighbors on your left side that you're arguing over property as some are doing. It says, uh, who art thou a great mountain before the rubble ball? Thou shalt become a plain, a mountain to a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace. You might as well go ahead and end this year by shouting grace, grace, and bring forth the headstone uh, or the cornerstone, which means uh, the thing that I could not complete in my own strength, the, the spirit and the power of God. When I say grace, grace, grace of the Father, grace of the Holy Spirit, grace of the Son, uh, it helps me to bring forth some stuff. Uh, yes, it does. Can I have the amplifier of those, those last verses there when it says we shall bring forth the headstone, the finishing able and of course the, the sons of all are able to get that done now the amplified there it says for on the screen who are you oh great mountain great mountain of what of human uh, obstacles yes Joshua led the return of the exiles from Babylon and was under Taking the rebuilding, undertaking. Well, we hear that word undertaking. Sometimes God's got more than you. Undertake what you should have. Or sometimes the undertaker tries to take you under six feet before it's your time. But not so, says the Lord, because the all is resuscitating you. And so he's coming back, and they're going to go back for the rebuilding. They're going to undertake the task of rebuilding. This is a season of rebuilding. i got to get rid of because my time is really moving fast today. And was undertaking the rebuilding of the temple before him he says you shall become a plain that mountain human obstacles a mere molehill and he and you shall bring forth the finishing the finishing gable stone 
Not just a headstone with somebody dead. No, you know, back in the day when people built a building with brick, they would put in the triangular part, the corner, the cornerstone. They would put all of the uh, founding fathers on that finishing stone. Shall I say, as we get ready to go out of uh, December, uh, yes, the 23rd into Christmas, that God's got a finishing strong anointing on you. You will finish strong. Uh, 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 one of uh, uh, our editors, Alex, began to say she does so much to help us out. She said, Pastor, let's finish strong. Strong. I was thanking her for all that she do to make all these uh, Facebook and YouTube and all the, that happen. And she said, let's finish strong. You'll finish strong. Allison, we'll finish strong. And the body of Christ will finish strong. It says, uh, and uh, the people will uh, bring forth. He shall bring on the finishing gable stone of the new temple with, with loud shoutings of the people. Sometimes people say, I go to MTC. Oh, they just too loud. Do they have to make so much noise? Well, when you know that the enemy thought he had killed you and God through the sons of all, we're going to see this as a, this really is a scripture of the two sons of the witness in the book of Revelation that the Antichrist and the beast system and the false prophet will try to kill. But they're going to get up because the enemy cannot kill what God has. He cannot curse what God has blessed. You will finish strong. Now, I'm going to have to leave all this alone because time is going. You'll bring forth a, a finish of the new temple. Yes, it's going to be a new temple. Not a new more than conquered, but a new one. Church won't be the way it used to be. It will have some of the fundamental foundational things because if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? But I pray that your temple is going to be new. Your body is going to be new. Your job is going to be new. Your family, your children, your sons, your daughter, your money, the new temple of God. And if you know God has finished it, you ain't quiet about it, give God a shout. It's Bible study, but shout grace, grace, shout. I say, don't just say it, shout grace, grace for what God is doing in my temple. Amen, amen. And then, of course, the rest of that goes on to talk about the signs of all. I better get on because my time's gone. I barely scratched the surface. Okay, here what the key scripture is supposed to be, and I'm going to have to make up some time here real quickly. Uh, I really have. Um, uh, but the key scriptures there, just write them down because we will not have time to really visit each one of them. People are asking, am I cursed? Song of Solomon 2. Verses 1 talks about the quintessential leader and uh, the fact that uh, uh, in 510 calls him the chiefest among 10,000. He's quintessential because he's like the lily of the valley, Song of Solomon, 2 and 1. But he's quintessential because he's the lion and the lamb. Amen. He's meek and lowly as a lamb, but he also is the lion. Amen. So uh, he's the chiefest among 10,000. Proverbs 26, 2 We'll look at that quickly. It says the curse causeless cannot come. Proverbs 26, 2. It's because the question is asked, do I have the blessing of the Lord on me in 2021? Well, let me say this. The curse can come, but it will not come without a cause. Uh, it says that uh, uh, like the sparrow in her wandering, the swallow in her flying, so the causeless, the, the causeless, the causeless curse does not alight. Amen. Uh, God, that's amplified uh, something classic. Can I have King James for me? King James, I appreciate that. But it says, uh, it almost says the same thing there in King James. It says, as the bird by wandering and as a swallow by flying, so the curse causeless, the curse causeless. If there is a curse, there's a cause. There's a reason there is a curse. The curse causing. In other words, as the uh, sparrow and the swallow, as they are flying and they're looking for something to land on, uh, they don't just land on anything. And the curse cannot just land on anything. Now, we're going deeper here. So the curse causes cannot come. Now, Isaiah 9, 6 is going to call Jesus again as a key scripture. A mighty man of war. Isaiah 9, 6. Back over to the key scriptures. Uh, it talks about Jesus is a man of war. That's our topic. We're talking about the quintessential leader. He's a man of war, and we're choosing to be blessed, and we're asking who is cursed. So you see that Isaiah 9, 6, you are familiar with that uh, Christmas scripture. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, might, Mighty God. That's war, man of war, Mighty God. He's an army. He has the might. It's not by your might. It's by his might. Amen. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Connect. Uh, draw your strength from your union with him. 
Amen. So uh, we see that in Isaiah. But here's how you choose to be blessed. That's one of our topics. A blessing is a choice. Write that in. Type that in. Blessing is a choice. Deuteronomy 30, 19. How do you know that? Blessing and cursing both are a choice. You have the choice to either be blessed or cursed, but you're going to have to use all the weapons, Bishop McClendon say. We have the weapons of the oil. We have the weapons of the blood. We have the weapons of praise. We have the weapons of obedience. We have the, the, the weapons of gifts of the spirit. You must make a choice whether or not you're going to use them. Now watch this in Deuteronomy 30, 19. Uh, the law the second time. Please pay attention. God says, I call heaven and earth to record, I guess he's a notary public. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death. You can either live or die, blessing and cursing. But he gives you a hint. Therefore, choose life. He never tell you to choose death. He never tell you to choose cursing. He said, choose, make a choice. Back on the screen, choose life. That both you and your seed may live. Amen. We're choosing to live. And everything that will help us live. In the natural, they got ventilators. And they washing their hands and temperature checkers. But we are choosing to live. A blessing is a choice. Time is moving fast. So let's go into these real quickly. Jesus is a man of war. I won't be able to go into all of them, so I'll just kind of paraphrase them. You can check them out when you get home, uh, wherever you may be, uh, uh, a little bit later. Over in Isaiah 59, it tells us in verse 19 uh, that the enemy, when he comes in like a flood, let's go there because some of these are people not familiar with. Uh, some they are, but this one they may not be familiar with, so I want to look at this. Uh, when the Bible tells us to put on the whole arm of God, that means God must have an arm. So in Isaiah 59, that, that will end by saying, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Well, if you go back up a couple of verses, you will see Jesus dressed in his armor. If we can go there, uh, we'll go there in a moment. Jehovah Gabor, that is. It says, for he put on righteousness. This is the Old Testament picture of Jesus. He put on righteousness as a breastplate, a helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on the garments a vengeance for clothing. His clothing is not all the latest fashion. Vengeance is his clothing. Uh, uh, and he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. His mantle, his cloak, come on now, was the zeal of God. Isaiah 9, right? And the zeal of God shall perform this. And the zeal of God was his coat. He was his overgarment. This is Jesus here that we need to connect to this quintessential leader. Uh, it goes on to say, because Song of Solomon asked the question, what is your beloved more than another? He's the chiefest. I mean, he's the example. He's a prototype. Well, here it is. According to their deeds, according, he will repay fury to his adversary, recompense, recompensation. <laughs> He'll pay you in his back to his enemies and to the owls. He will repay. Notice how many times you see the word recompense, recompense, recompense. That means something's about to happen with your compensation. You may have lost it, but he's going to recompense you. That name is Jehovah Gamola. Oh, I wish I had time. But then you will see uh, verse 19. What does all that mean? So shall they fear his name from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord, the sevenfold spirit shall raise up a standard uh, against the enemy you will not run but the enemy will run he shall raise up a standard so before the God raises up the standard you must see Jesus as a man of war ready to fight all right a uh, man of war Isaiah 59 uh, well that's Jehovah Gabor you saw up above there B you'll see in Revelations 19 uh, verse 11 uh, through 15, I won't go there. You know the story. It's at the end of Revelation. He shows up uh, crowned with many crowns, and he has uh, a vesture dipped in blood. Uh, come on, somebody. A man ready to tread down the wine press. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He has loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. Uh, come on, yes. Uh, his truth is still marred. So he has a sword so you can be crowned with 
many crowns. But in that same passage, Revelation 19, it says, worship Jesus for the worship of God is the testimony. When you worship, he testifies on your behalf. So, uh, yes, it's the spirit of prophecy. He began to tell you, he edify you when you worship him. He testifies when you worship him. He exhorts, he covers, and he builds. That's what prophecy is. It's not just a for foretelling, F O R E, telling, telling in the before it happened. It's forth telling. It's telling you what he shall bring forth, amen. But according to 1 Corinthians 14, he comforts. So he's a man of war. You better get ready to be crowned with many wars because on his, he has a name written on his thigh, a name that don't nobody know but he himself. Oh, amen. That's a man of war. Joshua 5, 13. As you get ready to go into uh, Jericho, the first city, thing that you never had before. You know Joshua, Jesus shows up as the captain. Joshua see him as a man with his sword drawn because they're getting ready in chapter 6 to go into Jericho. Something we're going to do on New Year's Eve night. Uh, we're going to blow the trumpet. We're going to blow the horn. Uh, no, we're not going to talk about the shofar. You're going to be in your car and all of us going to simultaneously blow our car horns at the same time. And when we do it, it's going to drown out the gunshot wounds. Uh, we're going to blow the horns and at that point, walls are going to come down that's what we see Jesus as a man of war so when Joshua sees him he say are you for us or are you for our adversary we just saw in Isaiah 59 he will repay your adversary but he's going to recompense you recompensate you he will give you he will exact your demands uh, according to Hebrews 10 34 and 35 so that's Joshua he's the captain of war uh, yes yes uh, in Isaiah 59 you saw he was an armed man Revelation 19 11 he He's an end time warrior. What kind of warrior? He's an end time warrior. We see in Joshua 5 13, he's a captain of war. He's the one that's leading the war. Yes, we see in Judges chapter 7, uh, verse number 20. Can we go there? Judge, uh, judges, uh, 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 Gideon, he's the poorest tribe in Manasseh. God calls him and says, Oh, mighty man of valor. Uh, Gideon said, Who, me? I'm from the poorest tribe in Manasseh. Man, we straight from the hood. Uh, and God said, no, I'm going to make you everything you need to be. Uh, and when he called in the battle, he gave him a strategy. He told him to take a lamp uh, and some lights and some pictures and make some noise. It's just something about when you get ready to go in, you're going to make some noise. That's why on New Year's, we're going to make some noise at the first viral service. Uh, then at midnight, we're going to make some noise. Paul and Silas make some noise. Uh, but watch this. It says uh, over in Judges chapter 7, uh, there it says, then the three companies uh, blew the trumpets and break the pictures and held the trumpets in their left hand uh, and in their right hand and they cried here's what they cried uh, the sword uh, of the Lord uh, and the sword of Gideon yes we understand God is Lord but you must know who your leader is they said those 300 camp said the sword of the Lord and the sword of Gideon so all the companies are more than conquerors uh, that is the head uh, come on that's everybody in the trustees and the board of ministry and the intercessors uh, on the front and the staff and then that's the body of elders and deacons that lead uh, and then there uh, uh, the third group that is the believers but when all three companies get on one accord uh, something happened the blessing of the Lord is released uh, and the enemy begins to self-destruct because he knows that we are unified uh, Psalm 133 style this is how good and how pleasant it is uh, when brethren dwell together in unity it is like the ointment uh, it is like the oil that flows down uh, from the head uh, to the beard in 2021 get it all in the picture that whole 2021 in there. It's like the head uh, that flows down in 2021. Uh, even Aaron Beard uh, it said it uh, began to flow and there the Lord commands the blessing. Uh, even life forevermore. That's what's getting ready to happen when we all understand not only is a sword of the Lord but who your leader is. Listening to the right voice will release the blessing because fail to be lined up. Uh, Bishop Jacks called it agreement, anointing, and alignment. Agreement, anointing, and and alignment, agreement, unity, anointing the ointment that flows down and alignment from the head to the beard to the skirt. When you get in order, there the Lord commands the blessing of even life forevermore out of Psalm 133. But when you're out of order, the blessings uh, will be short-lived. Sons of oil. Jesus Christ. 
All right, we're talking about Jesus, mighty man. Well, Hebrews 4 talks about uh, uh, he's the sword of the Lord in Judges 4 and 20. Hebrews 4 and 12, back over to the notes again, calls him the high priest sword. The high priest sword. Uh, the, please, uh, those notes again, Hebrews uh, uh, chapter 4, 12 through 16, the high priest sword. Uh, yes, that's what we're talking about, the quintessential leader. So uh, in A, he's an armed man, quintessential. In B, he's an end time warrior, Revelation 19. In C, he's a captain of war in Joshua. Jericho. Indeed, he's a sword of the Lord, uh, Judges 720. And in Hebrews 4, he's a high priest. Uh, and here's where it says uh, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 says, the word of God, the word of God uh, is more sharper than any two-edged sword, uh, piercing even to the body asunder, soul and spirit, marrow and joint. It is a discerner, sifter, analyzer of the intents and thoughts of the heart. It says all things are open into the eyes of with him that we have to do, seeing then that we have a great high priest not only is he a warrior but he's also not only is he a high priest but he is also a warrior a man of war seeing then that we have a great high priest uh, that's passed into the heavens let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy for our failures uh, grace to help well time appropriate help coming just when we need it Jesus the man of war my time's going up uh, it's Christmas Eve Eve. I got to get out of here. Well, let me ask the question, two questions before we go. Uh, who's cursed then? Uh, who's cursed? Uh, uh, we'll give you, I'll uh, just kind of paraphrase them, and maybe time will allow me to come back and look at each one of them. But I won't. It says here, uh, we see over uh, in uh, the, uh, the arms of the flesh in Jeremiah 17, it says, uh, Cursed is the man uh, that trusts uh, in the arms of flesh. Can we bring that up? At least look at that. Cursed is the man that relies on the arms of the flesh, on your might, on your money, uh, on your man. Come on, somebody. Uh, yes, on your members. Uh, do you curse when you depend on yourself? Jeremiah chapter 7. Then we'll look over at the story uh, of Ham. Thus saith the Lord. There it is. Curse. Who's cursed? The man that trusted in man. If you got hope in your contact, only in your surroundings and all your friends and your 401k and your company there's a curse on you you must trust in the Lord with all your heart uh, as much as I'm your pastor don't put your trust in me trust in the Lord the city of Birmingham came and did a video asking pastors uh, to speak a word over the city and I was one of about 12 that they put on their website and they say what's the one word uh, you want to say to the city I say the word trust out of Proverbs uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart Heart, lean not on to your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path he's a pathologist if the path is not clear he will become an engineer he's like a highway huh, in the wilderness and rivers in the desert somebody talk to me he will engineer a path where there is no way because he is the way if you just don't do it your way yes so it says, "Cursed is the man that maketh his flesh his arm, and who whose heart departed from the Lord." That's who's cursed. Number two, uh, the, uh, we see the story in Genesis nine: uh, 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 Saint Sham, Ham, and Japheth, uh, and uh, you know, a curse uh, was put upon him. And, and the reason was it wasn't whether the man was black, whether it was Ham or Cana. That that's not the moral of the story in Genesis chapter nine about those sons. But here was the story: is when they saw the nakedness of their father. Father, two decided they would back up and cover the nakedness of their father. Uh, maybe we want to just go there real quickly. Uh, yes, and Noah uh, awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. Uh, it's on the screen. And he said, curse be Canaan. I'm sorry. Curse be Canaan, a servant of servants, uh, and he shall uh, be unto uh, his brothers. So a curse was put on him because he couldn't handle the mistakes and the nakedness of his father. There are some of you have watched your natural fathers and your spiritual fathers uh, and you seen the exposures of the works of their flesh and rather than interceding for them you talk about them and you release the curse over your life but before we go into 2021 I break that curse off your life. I wish I had more time. Uh, over in uh, uh, another place there in the gospel in Galatians chapter 1 here's how you bring a curse. Let's go there uh, I just need to do this because we don't need to go into 2021 all jacked up in Galatians chapter 1 Paul 
Paul says, I marvel. I marvel. Galatians 1, we'll pick it up there. Uh, 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 he says, uh, uh, to whom be glory forever and ever. Verse 6, he says, uh, I am more that you are so soon removed from him that called you. That word removed means AWOL, absent without a leave. Many people left the home, didn't get the father's blessing in marriage, left the job, talked about the company you left for, didn't get the company's blessing, left the church when it started, so I'm crazy, didn't get the blessing, absent with all, out, leave, remove. It's called a dishonorable discharge, but the Bible don't call it that. It said, let him be cursed. Y'all ain't talking to me. Somebody need to tell you. He goes on to say next in verse 7, you'll see the language. He says, which is another gospel, but he says, uh, uh, but if anybody would preach another gospel, which is another, but there be some of you that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ going into another religion. Uh, notice what he goes on to say, uh, but though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you that we that what we preach, let him be a curse. You must understand your lineage. Uh, you must understand who's preached the gospel for you and to be absent without leave. Uh, you made the races not given to the swift nor to the strong. I feel like we're getting some straightening here. The times are too crowded, critical to be just preaching this pablum gospel but it goes on to say what else is curse uh, Malachi 310 uh, those that don't tie those that mishandle the, the, the money of God I'll be talking about on Sunday how you handle God's money it'll bless in, it'll curse or bless individuals or it will curse them he says because you rob God uh, you are cursed with a curse even this whole nation there are five different ways uh, that the curses uh, begin to get on you now I don't want to leave a curse on you there uh, out of uh, the non-tithers you see non-tithers on the screen uh, go back one more time the non-tithers on the screen you got to get that right uh, but first it starts with the first fruit Romans 11 speaks of the first fruit that first fruit belong to God uh, all of it then it talks about uh, the tithe over in Deuteronomy 26 Romans 11 calls Israel the first fruits so if they are holy then you can't help but to be holy now let's talk about who's blessed and I'm going to get ready to land this thing here I'm just about three about through here uh, about three I'm on three well who's blessed let's talk about who's blessed because the purpose of this oil is to get you blessed and get the curse off of you in 2021 who's blessed Someone. one tells us who's blessed. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standing in the way of sinners, nor sitting in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. He loves his book, and in his law doth he meditate every day and every night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, and everything he doeth shall prosper, but the ungodly are not so, but they are like the shafts uh, that, uh, that driveth away, that withereth up, uh, without substance, without hope. You are blessed. Jeremiah will say the same thing. Who else is blessed? I'm wrapping this up. Uh, the whole family is blessed. Uh, Psalm 128. Please pull that up. Uh, I decree in Psalm 128. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that worship, that walketh in his ways. Who are the blessed in 2021? Uh, for thou shalt eat the labor of your hands. Uh, yes, what you're working on uh, will not be destroyed. That's blessed. Uh, happy shall thou be, and it shall be well with you. That's who's blessed. Number too. Watch this. Your wife is blessed. She shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of your house. Your children are blessed. They shall be. You ought to be shouting by now. Yes, shall be it. Please get that back. Yes, as, as, as olive plants around your table. Yes, please keep going there. Behold, uh, uh, that uh, thus shall the man uh, be blessed that feareth the Lord. If you worship God, uh, if you give God his portion, uh, yes, if you present your body, the Lord shall bless you out of Zion and you shall see the good of Jerusalem. You'll see Birmingham. I know everybody's trying to figure out how we bring the crime down. More sheriffs, more policemen. But I'm going to tell you, when you get in the word of God, uh, when you begin to tithe, when you begin to honor God, that's how you break the curse of cities. That's how you break the curse of families. That's how you break the curse. Who's blessed? Those that understand what God requires. Yes. 
Uh, that's who's blessed. Uh, Psalm 1, uh, uh, oh, 3 said, the Lord is blessed. He's so blessed. All he asks you to do, let's go back over to the notes. Uh, the Lord is so blessed. Uh, that's who's blessed. That he tell you to bless the Lord. Uh, you see that? Who's blessed? Uh, Psalm 103 said, bless the Lord. Uh, uh, Psalm 103 verses 1 through 4 and 7 said, it would end with said, he made known his ways to Moses and his acts to the children. But before you get to verse 7, uh, which will end saying uh, uh, that God will let you know what he's getting ready to do and it says as the father pitied his children so had he pitied us and he would not destroy us around verse 11 and 12 because uh, he would not give us what we deserve because he pitied us but when you bless the Lord uh, affectionately bless him Psalm 103 says and forget not all his benefits who, forgive, who forgives you all your iniquities heals you of all your diseases satisfies your mouth with good things uh, redeem your life from destruction you would have could and should have been dead uh, wrong place, wrong time, but God was your shield. Uh, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. Uh, my help cometh from the Lord, uh, the Lord that made heaven and earth, uh, the Lord that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleep. That's the one, uh, the Lord that shall be your shade. Uh, he will be your buckler, the Amplified Bible. That side of you not carrying a shield, God covers your black, your backside. Uh, that's when you are blessed. Uh, you ought to give God praise for that. That's when you know you're blessed. Uh, the sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve. You're coming in and you're going out. That's the Psalm 121st division of Psalm. That's what happens when you bless the Lord. He redeems your life from COVID. Uh, you would have been dead. Cancer could not kill you. Come on. Uh, arthritis could not stop you. Headaches could not slow you down. Uh, amputation could not. Uh, come on somebody. Give God a praise. Uh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, sons of oil. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, though that God has snatched out the hand, the hand of the enemy and gathered them out of all lands from the east to the west. Psalm 107 say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. That's who's blessed. I'm just about through. Please forgive me any of my folly. Who else is blessed? Matthew 5 uh, verses 1 through 16 said all of God's disciples are blessed. If you're a child of God, a son of God, a member of God, a part of the church of God. Uh, Jesus was, uh, called his disciples to himself and the beatitude and he said, blessed are you when you mourn shall you shall be comforted. Blessed are the merciful so they shall see mercy. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled. And he gives nine qualities of what is like to be blessed in the kingdom of God. But he ends it in verse 13, 14, 15, 16 by saying you are the salt of the earth. Uh, you are the light of the world. Uh, so let your light so shine uh, before men that they may see your good works uh, and glorify God. You are so blessed. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious and give you peace and get you ready on this Christmas Eve. I bet you glad you stopped for a moment. Who's blessed? Uh, not only is the man blessed, the family blessed, the Lord blessed, the disciples blessed, but I want to tell you the signs of all. We already talked about they are blessed. And last but not least, and I close the book right here. Uh, the Bible says uh, in Numbers chapter 22, uh, there was a whole wicked king uh, that tried to hire uh, uh, out a prophet uh, to come and curse God's people. If we can go there in Numbers 22 verses 1 through 6, uh, I want to close uh, by talking to the sons of oil uh, that the devil cannot uh, curse uh, what God has already blessed. Uh, you got your life together. You got your money together. You got your mind together. And everywhere you fall short, Jesus makes up the difference. Somebody ought to say thank you, Lord. Uh, and the Bible said the children uh, of Israel who's blessed? Israel is blessed. Ch uh, God's people is blessed. The children of Israel set forward. Uh, you get ready to go forward uh, on what Christian soldier forgetting those things that are behind me leaving 2021 behind uh, I'm pressing on uh, the upward way new heights I'm gaining every day still praying uh, as I onward bound Lord uh, plant uh, my feet uh, on higher ground uh, 2020 is behind us uh, 2021 is on the way uh, the children of Israel set forward uh, 
pitch in the plains of Moab uh, on the side of Jordan uh, by Jericho uh, and Balak uh, the son of Zippor uh, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites uh, see the problem is uh, the devil knows uh, what you've done to him through your praise uh, through your service uh, excuse my French uh, and he's mad uh, as hell as a six shooter and he wants to curse you but the devil is a liar you too blessed to be stressed in the name of Jesus I'm just about through here on this Christmas Eve the next page said he wanted to curse Moab was so afraid of the people of his the devil is scared of you because they were many they were mighty and Moab was distressed because of the children if you think you are distressed uh, look at me beloved I want to tell you the devil is distressed because he know you're about to slip out of his hand he know you're a son of a oil like the oil makes you slippery he can't get a grip on you God says touch not my anointed uh, and do my prophets uh, and do my families uh, and do my cities uh, no harm uh, and the Bible said uh, Moab said unto the elders of Midian uh, now shall all this company lick up all that are round about us uh, and lick it up great uh, and, and Balak the son of Zippor yes uh, they called him uh, the king of Moab uh, at that time uh, and he began uh, and he sent messages before unto Balaam the son of Beor Pethor which is in the river of the land of the children of his people to call him saying behold uh, here it is uh, there is a people there is is a people there is a people there is a people if my people which are called by my name he said uh, there Balaam there is a people uh, come out from Egypt uh, come out of danger come out of crack uh, come out of the world uh, come out of depression they come out of religion uh, he said behold uh, they cover the face of the earth and they shall abide over against me he said, they're coming against me. Uh, he said, come now, therefore, I pray thee and curse this people. Uh, lest peradventure they shall smite them that I may uh, drive them out of the land. Uh, but the end of the story, as I get ready to land this thing, uh, he took them up to a mountain. Uh, he accepted uh, the bribe. Uh, and he went up to every angle. Uh, one side, read the rest of the story. And he saw they were blessed. Every time he cursed them, they were blessed. He went up to another angle because it doesn't matter which side uh, the devil look at you. If he look at you in your future, you're blessed. Uh, if he look at you from your past, it's blessed. It's covered by the blood. If he look at you from side to side, uh, God is on your side. Uh, no matter which side you look, uh, it said God is not a man uh, that he should lie. Uh, and because God blessed them, uh, they shall forever be blessed. Uh, so let me decree over you the blessing of the Lord uh, that makes you rich. Uh, I will consummate it. Uh, I will finalize it uh, with the distribution of oil that have passed through my hands uh, that have been achieved through my own crushes and my own pains. It is the anointing that destroys the yoke. So whatever you can do, uh, if it's possible to get out during that second watch, uh, I'll be speaking and decreeing tangibly in my presence the blessing uh, over every man, the blessing over every family, the blessing over every job. And that's not it. Uh, that's just the blessing of the oil. Oil. Then on the first Sunday, we're coming right back and we're going to have the blessings of the blood. Uh, we must at this time uh, use every weapon that we have uh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God uh, to the pulling down and the destruction and overthrowing of strongholds, casting down uh, every imagination, uh, every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, every lie that will tell you that you are cursed. Uh, when you have tithe and all that you didn't do with your money you did with your talent some of you didn't give money but every time the church doors open you use your talents because talent is time and is money so you are not blessed amen and I don't care who spoke it uh, there were times people tried to pull you out of the 
place that God planted you because they thought the grass was greener, but you would not be moved. You are still blessed because you love the word. You respond to the word. You have a great high priest. And I want to tell the devil to hush. Uh, be still. Be silent. Uh, for if God be for us, uh, who? Who that can be against us? Amen. Uh, the quintessential warrior. Now that all is upon you to be just as humble as he causes you to go in atmospheres and stratospheres. And when you get in there with all that you will have going, they're going to ask you, where did you come from? And you say, I navigated and migrated and matriculated through the tabernacle, through the altar of incense, uh, through the perfume, or through the art of the apothecary. And I end myself uh, being in that golden pot of manna in the most holy place. There was uh, Aaron's rod that budded. Yes, there was the manna. God sustained them one day at a time and the Ten Commands that were broken. Yes, you broken some commandments. Yes, you did not wholly obey. But Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be done.